Today we're gonna talk about some RAM modules and not just any kind but one of the best I've used so far on the AMD Ryzen platform. It is a 32GB G-Skill Triton Z Neo set with the model number of F4 3600C16D 32GTZN. Wow, that's a long name. We got to test them on all current generations of Ryzen 3000 series processors, 4000 Renoir APU models, and of course with a special focus on the currently most popular Zen 3 generation Ryzen 5000 series. These modules are practically made for them since Ryzen processors are very demanding due to their fast memory controller. If maybe you're thinking that you've already seen something similar in our channel, you're absolutely right. We already done a review of the similar Trident Z Neo series with the same operating frequencies of 3600 MHz with almost identical CAS latency but slightly lower timings. The key difference is that this set consists of dual rank modules with two rows of memory chips each, kind of like having two single rank modules connected into one. Even though they still have the same 64-bit communication interface with the CPU and thus the same transfer rate, they are still faster because they can access multiple data pages and practically speed up some pre-work between the transfers. Even that is enough to make them run faster than the classic single-rank models we tested earlier. Today's test modules, in addition to the higher capacity of 2x16GB and dual-rank configuration, also have lower secondary timings 16, 16, and the 36. An important detail is that they use the fastest Samsung memory chips with the B die instead of Hynix, which was the case with previous Trident Z Neo modules. The printed circuit board is made of 10 layers in order to achieve the highest quality signal and higher frequencies. The memories are cooled by a recognizable two-color cooler with the fine brushed metal surface and a characteristic three-part fin on the top. Between them is a milky white light diffuser with addressable RGB effects which is controlled and synchronized via G-Skill application. So, these modules promise both great performance and attractive visual effects which, by the way, you can completely turn off. So, let's get straight to the point. How does it work and how fast is it? Suffice to say that this is the fastest PC memory I've used so far. Right out of the package, it is already set to operate fast and snappy. It is practically ideally programmed with XMP profiles at 3600 MHz, CL16 16361 t at 1.35 volts. so even those who do not experiment with the settings will have maximum performance. When it comes to AMD Ryzen processors, the motherboard would automatically set it to the fastest preset mode since it synchronizes the operation of the RAM module memory controller and the fabric bus at 1800 MHz. Extremely low latencies and R2 configuration of chips makes these modules lightning fast. We tried pairing up the modules with AMD A520, B550 and X570 boards. It works equally well on Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series and especially well on Ryzen APU 4000 series because the integrated Radon Mega graphics benefit greatly from a memory with such parameters. In addition to fast operation on XMP profiles, there's also a large overclocking reserve. It is capable of operating synchronously up to 2033 MHz, i.e. effectively DDR4 4066 MHz, with CL181741 t latencies and 1.4 volts on the Ryzen 5000 platform. Of course, you will also need a bit of luck getting a processor specimen whose memory controller and fabric bus can handle such high frequencies. This also explains why this 3600 MHz Trident Z Neo is faster and better than some memories that are rated as DDR4-4000. Memory controller operates at half the frequency, so it's difficult to synchronize the RAM module, fabric bus and the memory controller. In addition to the CPU, the second factor is the motherboard. Even if you have a good proven processor, not all boards can run RAM and memory controller at 2000 MHz synchronously and achieve 2 GHz on the fabric bus. We have seen even the exact same models but two different specimens that behave differently in terms of the requirements, even the most expensive ones with the X570 chipset. 
With the same processor and the exactly same settings, one would work without problems at 2000 MHz, while the other would not even boot. In most cases, you will have to increase the voltage on the system controller, but also voltage on the fabric bus. But keep in mind that do not overdo it because it can be counterproductive. Max up to 1.25 volts for the SOC part and 1.05 to 115 volts on the part of the fabric bus which connects IOD and compute core die chiplet. The third requirement is RAM modules like the G-Skill which alongside a good Ryzen 4650G Renoir processor has reached 2000 MHz, allowing the integrated Vega graphics to flourish and achieve 50% better results than some ordinary cheap DDR4-2666 memory. With one Ryzen 3 3300X specimen, it reaches the maximum for the Zen 2 cores at 1900 MHz, i.e. effective of 3.8 GHz. Finally, the Ryzen 7 5800X achieves 2033, i.e. an effective of 4066 MHz, which is a great result. After all, please take a look at our results. On the Ryzen 3000 and 5000 series, don't expect some insane boosts, but you can get real improvements with some fine tuning and making the most out of what the current generation of hardware has to offer. Translate it into numbers, that means about 5 to 10% of additional performance. The reality is some games benefit more from the faster memory, others less, and the same goes for the applications where we notice that Adobe Suite seems to show the most gain. The conclusion is that this is definitely a memory for enthusiasts, but also for those who want the absolute maximum out of their AMD Ryzen platform, but without any tinkering. Even if you don't reach the infamous 2000 MHz limit, you will, with a high degree of probability, be able to reach the equally impressive DDR4 3933 CL1616136 1T, which is still damn impressive. Some would say that this is a lot of talk for just 5-10% to improvement, which the average user practically doesn't feel in actual use. Partly true because most of them will reach some level very close to the maximum with good DDR4-3200 MHz modules. But the truth is that the memory is part of the more complex puzzle that the most demanding users are in pursuit of, and that is maximum performance. And it goes like this, with 10% smart access memory, 10% precision boost overdrive performance and 10% performance gained with the fast memory like the G-Skill CL16 dual rank, you do get a PC which will offer you top performance. It is worth the effort at the time when the high performance DDR4 generation RAM modules are no longer so expensive with the exception of some extreme examples. In a word, this G-Skill with a price of 200 to 250 euros is one of the best if not the best memory you can afford for the AMD Ryzen computer. We are off to a great start of the year with some impressive hardware. If you like this video and would like to see more reviews like this, consider subscribing to our channel and drop a like on our video. My name is Marco and you're watching Bench House and I will see you next time.